objectives of the station is what exactly is big data processing with Scala and Spark. So big data processing can be understood, Spark could be understood, but what about Scala, right? So what, exa what exactly is the role of it? So it, it's a brief note about uh, Scala. Why Scala? Okay, so now coming back quickly, uh, so a note on Scala. Uh, the good thing with Scala is, Scala is the pure object oriented language with the support for functional programming. Isn't it something, uh, at least to me, it looks very exciting. It looks very exciting. So it is a pure object, object oriented programming language. Everything is an object, but it gives you the support for functional programming, which Typically, if, if you, I don't know how many of you have developed the systems for big data in production, but if you have, then you must be knowing that when it comes to the big data systems and all, you know, typically uh, object-oriented programming and all take a backseat. Typically, your style of programming is more of a functional thing, right? That's, that's the reason typically people go for Hadoop streaming rather than going for native MapReduce unless it becomes absolutely necessary, right? So those are some of the things which are very, very exciting about it. It supports both, uh, you know, uh, both kind of, uh, so, uh, you know, both kind of programming styles altogether, right? So that is, that is one thing. And of course, Scala is very much in the fabric of present and future big data frameworks. So the, I think I, I saw a question earlier, but I could not answer it, wherein somebody was saying that can I write, uh, you know, uh, uh, MapReduce programs also in Scala. Definitely, you can write MapReduce programs in Scala. However, there is already a framework, Scalding, which in, through which you can write your MapReduce stuff much more more easier um, in Scala. So Scalding, it's there. Spark, talk about it. You talk about so rather than this, what I can suggest is go and type something called Spark, and then you can see how, what exactly is uh, are the oh okay. So type Apache Spark. Because if you type Spark, you will get a lot of variety of links, right? But when you type Apache Spark, you will see what exactly are the exciting things which are happening in it. So, of course, it is the part of it. Akka. Akka is a different ball game altogether. Probably you will see some some type of course being launched in Akka also. Uh, I kind of had to work on Akka some time back. But again, that guy has also completely written uh, Scala, right? In fact, Akka works on a actor uh, model of uh, you know Scala altogether. It is kind of enhanced. And also a kind of a note which you are seeing that all of the examples uh, of Spark which you will be seeing uh, for all practical purposes, they would be in Scala. They would not be in any other language. And we understand that when it happens to Hadoop courses, so when, when, it, uh, when it comes to Hadoop, Hadoop is quite a big framework. It is much bigger, at least today, it is much bigger as compared to Storm. Storm is a very, very small, I would say, not even uh, one-fifth of uh, Hadoop. And this framework like Spark, which is still evolving, but yes, like early adoption is there in industry. That's why, you know, people are asking for it, and that's why we are launching the course also for it. But yes, uh, there, it be, Java is a prerequisite. <laughs> And many a times people do not have the background of it. We have received many feedbacks from people that there should have been a specific session for Java, but we have purposefully not taken any sessions separately. We have provided some self-paced courses wherein people can, you know, uh, go by themselves for the required knowledge of Java, but we can afford as of now, we can afford to have a separate sessions, you know, uh, uh, about Scala. So enough Scala coverage would be there in the course. The this is the right time when I talk about it. So in fact, the entire course is going to be eight modules. The first four modules are completely on Scala, and the remaining four modules are completely on Spark. So before, you know, it should not happen that when I'm talking something about Spark and uh, trying to write something, you're just wondering about the syntax. You're just wondering about what exactly is it. Is it an object? Is it a, you know, kind of this guy is trying to write a for loop or is it, because the syntaxes are way different, way different from Java. 
you know the traditional java whatever you have seen so with java because you know there might be a lot of people who are who are already working in it but definitely our experience is at least on these newer set of technologies or newer set of languages like scala like python not python uh, ruby and all or haskell or closer and all people have not really that much experience so it makes a strong case for us to you know do the coverage of scala at least enough coverage so we are not going to do a complete reference of a scala here but in four modules, I think approximate 12 hours of it are going to be dedicated to it. To it will be enough for you to get up and running, and you know explore more things on your own. So that's where I hope the name also uh, you know uh, is quite clear to you, right? Would you cover actor part? No, not necess not necessarily, Harsh, because actors. Actors is something which is which will take you to the direction of Akka. So there is a separate course on which I'm I mean not only I, there are other people also who are working on it. Okay. So at that point of time definitely we'll be covering those actors part of a scala. But with this question, I assume that you have some background in scala already. Right? So that's a good thing, and uh, the the other other good thing about uh, you know Scala is uh, at least uh, in order to understand it, you should know at least programming. Because when I would be covering it, I would not be telling you what exactly is a for loop or what exactly is a for while loop. We I would be covering it from the angle that how exactly it is implemented in Scala, right? So for loop, while loop, uh, if else, uh, kind of there are no case statements in Scala, but Yes, what are the options, iterations, collections, at least this basic understanding should be there. We'll see how to, you know, how exactly Scala is different from other languages. So per se, you don't really need to know Java, you don't really need to know Scala, but you should know programming. That, that at least this is a fair assumption, right? So that would be about uh, Scala coverage. 